What is up, Early Edge family? Happy Friday. I am so happy to be here. I'm not wearing a Masters shirt, everybody. It just happens to be Masters green. We got a big golf show today. Of course, we're going to touch on the NBA. We're going to touch on MLB. We're going to touch on soccer. And Danny Brasco is here for UFC 300. But ladies and gentlemen, we got to take a look at the recap screen first. Let's take a look at how we did yesterday. A lot of X's, a lot of green check marks. This looks like five and five. So if you add in the juice, technically, certainly a losing day. We got to do better than five and five. Props to Buckets for going two out of three here. We lose our sports line pick at Rangers game was very interesting. What was it? One nothing Oakland. Didn't see that coming, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I did see everybody in the chat. This is a very active chat. Thanks for hitting the like button. Bradley Jacobs, he says seven and two over our last nine picks. Nothing from him today. Well, I guarantee you a lot of people in the chat will have some picks. I like the discipline, Bradley Jacobs. It's Friday. So how do we do it on a Friday, ladies and gentlemen? We kick up the energy just a little bit for Big Pick Energy Friday. Woo! Let's go! We got a rocky. Yeah. We got Rocky with with the uh, the hooks and the jabs. We got Eminem, aka Slim Shady, in the bottom right. And then, of course, if you missed your double espresso or maybe your single espresso today, no worries because it's time for your chip me up. Good morning, see you. Good morning, Buckets. Good morning, Teddy. Good morning, Jake. Good morning, Early Edge fam. And make sure to turn the volume up, cause bum 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 bum. Ba -da -da -da. That's right, it's Masters Week, and we're coming at you with a guess of national picks. Fired up to be back on that golf train, riding with my main man. See ya. It's gonna be a great. There ain't no off season. It's gonna be a great summertime here for your boy. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, you said it, Chip, and I know you were probably talking in a different context, but the cool thing about golf and the Masters, it's major four of, or excuse me, major one of four, and we've got golf basically up to September. So, yep. and I do want to I do want to announce this. You don't see Sniper today. You don't see AMAGs. We're going to have a Saturday and Sunday show like we've had the last few weeks. I'm going to be hosting the Saturday and Sunday show, and it's mostly because it's Masters weekend. So I'm going to be giving up my round matchups on Saturday and Sunday. We're going to have Sniper here. You're going to see AMAGs, a lot of baseball picks this weekend as well. So really no offseason. College basketball is done. NFL is done. The early edge is flying through. we got so much content for you. Buckets, I got to ask you, first of all, I love the new hairdo. Now, I know we had a new hair color, but now it's kind of like – Comb down. I love what you're doing with it. Big Cheesy wants to know, where is the cheese wedge? You, there's no way you can put everything up there every day, right? Is that is that the excuse on the cheese wedge from Big Cheesy? Oh, that's not an excuse for Big Cheesy. The Big Cheese Wheel is actually cheese wedge, cheese wheel, whatever. It is, it's in my car. It's on the dashboard because on it he wrote, but or he wrote, buckets is the man. So that's my Ryan, my reminder. Why can't I talk today? Every time I get up and get in my car, I see buckets is the man. It's a little reminder to myself. I am the man. Thank you, Cheesy. Uh, you know what's funny about that? I think I've seen that picture. I think you took a picture of it. I, I feel like it was on your dashboard in your car. So cheesy, you got you got a raise, you got a promotion. Not not in the on the bookshelf, but in the car as a daily reminder. Good stuff. Uh, are you still receiving stuff in the PO box buckets? Uh, I have not checked in about a week, so potentially. But ever since we had the whole, we had to throw your package away due to the smell scare. I've been giving it some breathing room. I love that. Uh, Danny Brasco, there's a lot of people in the chat. I'm looking at the comments. Bitsy, for example, repping out UFC, UFC 300. You got to be excited. I'm amped. See a main card picks today. I was on on Wednesday giving out prelim picks, and the main card is absolutely stacked. I got some spicy ones, too. You know, I like bringing plus money to the show. I'm sure there'll be some agreeers and some disagreeers in the comments. So I'm excited to see what the people think about my picks today professional transition from Danny Brasco because Buckets has some plus money plays today. I've got some plus money plays today in golf. I've got a three ball and I've got a two ball for the Masters for Friday. Buckets, you know how we do it. We always, at least usually, start with soccer. You've got a plus money play here. Let's start with that one. Let's start with that one. Of course, we will see. I have two plays for us all as well today. But starting with that plus money one, we're looking at the matchup between Gil Vassant taking on Sporting Lisbon in the Portuguese Premier League this afternoon at 3.15 p.m. And Sporting Lisbon, if you're not already betting them, this is on you at this point, guys. This team is just printing money. They are not only the most high-scoring team in Portugal, they're the highest-scoring team in Europe currently. More goals than PSG, more goals than 
Manchester City, more goals than Liverpool, more goals than just everyone right now. Bayer Leverkusen, it doesn't matter. 27 games played, 79 goals scored. And they're at the point in the season where they are two or three wins away from clinching the title and winning this league. So they cannot slow down as they play a Gil Lassant side that has no idea what they're doing anymore. They are falling apart. They defensively are just non-existent. And Sporting could put three or four or five goals in this afternoon, taking that team total over two and a half at plus 105. I would have played this guys at minus 120, minus 130. If you see Sporting, you bet on goals. And for our second play, we are going to the Svein Bundesliga, the second Bundesliga German division, as we've got a great matchup between Grauder Firth taking on FC Kaiser Slautern. Now, this is a weird one because it's a weird league. Bottom two teams get relegated out of the second Bundesliga, and currently the second to last team, 17th to the 12th team, only three points separate them. So you have seven teams that are desperate week in and week out to produce some kind of result. And FC Kaiser Slautern is one of these clubs. Meanwhile, Grauder Firth is kind of safe right now. They can't get promoted. They can't get relegated. And it looks like they've almost given up as they dropped a 2-0 loss to Osnabrück last week. I'm taking Kaiser Slaughter and draw no bet at minus 120 here because this is a team that is in better form and has better motivation than their Grauder Firth opponent. Absolutely love it, Buckets. Love the picks. Love the two thumbs up. That represents two wins for Buckets and two out of three yesterday, Buckets. Good job uh, on that. And by the way, we've got some picks in the chat that I I don't always see them all, right? But David Tuck has an interesting under pick, I believe, on the St. Louis Blues. And for the record, I absolutely love the Rocky references. I believe it was UF Larry and Taylor Dutton with the Rocky Four references. Danny Brasco, I got to go back to it. Rocky Four, the best Rocky, right? I know we've done this before. I can't remember your answer. We have done it before, but I got to go Clubber Lang and Rocky Three. That's my favorite. But of course, if he dies, he dies. Might be the best quote out of any Rocky movie. Incorrect answer, but the pronunciation actually uh, made up for it. All right. By the way, uh, speaking of soccer bets, speaking of golf bets, and speaking of all the bets, we're giving out some sports line picks with MLB, NBA. We're going to touch them all today. If you want to place these bets, BetMGM, that's the place to do it. New BetMGM customers can sign up today and get up to $1,500 in bonus bets. Just place your first wager of at least $10, and you'll receive up to $1,500 instantly if your bet loses with bonus code EDGE. That's bonus code EDGE, E-D-G-E. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got to get to some Masters picks. Really no delay today because they finished round one and they just basically got started with round two on time. So we've got some time to get these bets in, but we may as well get them in now. So I've got a couple of golf bets and then we'll carry on with plenty more right after this break. The best couch potatoes come from Pluto TV country. And these taters, they like all sorts of different things. Survivor Channel, Ink Master Channel. If it's got a spaceship in it, I'm probably watching it. Three channels dedicated to CSI. Whatever mood you're in, it's going to be easy watching. Bukum Dano says Knicks Nets under 211 and a half. Dwayne says Braves Dodgers money line parlay. Uh, a lot, a lot going on here. Some Rocky three answers says Dan Torres. And Braves minus one and a half says uh, Lee Brown. He's the one that usually drops the presidential trivia on us. Well, I'm going to drop a couple of golf picks on you. I'm going to start with a two ball. Tony Finau over Justin Thomas. This is really a case of what I saw yesterday, but what I've seen with the incoming form. When you look at Tony Finau and Justin Thomas, they both have good Masters records. They're both good at Augusta, at least historically. So that's not really factoring in. But when you look at Tony Finau's form coming in here, and frankly, I do think he probably is a better course fit than Justin Thomas, but his form coming in from a recent form standpoint, it's just better than Justin Thomas's. And then you add what happened yesterday, which really doesn't factor in too much because it's not altogether unexpected. But Justin Thomas did most of his damage with the short short game. Now, credit to him, short game, th those count as shots too, but off the tee and on approach, he wasn't very good at all, whereas Tony Finau was pretty great. He lost with the putter. That's kind of been the Tony Finau way over the last few months, but Justin Thomas hasn't been very good with the putter over all the last few months either, so I actually think that part of it is a wash. You take out the around the green game, Tony Finau can be good there, sometimes just as good as Justin Thomas, but he's been much better with the ball striking in recent form-wise and certainly yesterday as well, so I think this minus 115 is a very good price. I've seen it at other places at as high as minus 125, minus 130. I would play it at minus 130. I wouldn't go any anything above that because I, at that point, I think we're just paying too heavy of a price for a guy, Tony Finau, who, frankly, I didn't really support coming into this tournament. But again, this is a matchup against Justin Thomas, who I didn't support really at all. So I, I like the matchup here. And then I'm going to a three ball. I hate saying this. 
because I like all my picks the same generally, but I do like this one a little bit more than the two ball. And it's because of how Patrick Cantley played yesterday. This is a round two, three ball. Patrick Cantley plus 125. Part, part of the reason I like this too is because it's plus 125 over Minwoo Lee and Ricky Fowler. And listen, Minwoo Lee, he has been good here before, but the way he did it the one time he was good here, I don't think is very sustainable. We know he had a finger injury about a week ago. And honestly, the way his game is right now, he should be great off the tee. But everywhere else, I don't think you can count on Minwoo Lee other than maybe with the putter. Patrick Cantley has not been good coming in. But he really flashed the ball striking yesterday. I was very impressed with it. It did look a little bit like vintage Patrick Cantley, and I expect the same from him today. Not an outstanding day, but a very good day from Patrick Cantley. And oh, by the way, Ricky Fowler, haven't mentioned him yet. He's been very bad. He was bad yesterday, plus four. The ball striking was bad, as it has been. The recent form has been bad. I, it's it's crazy to say, but I, I think Min Lee is the main competition here. I, I don't think Ricky Fowler is going to end up factoring in over 18 holes. So at plus 125, really like this number. At other outfits, it's going to be plus 120. It probably won't be any shorter than that, though. And you can find this one at pretty much every book because these three balls generally are pretty consistent across all books. If you have a matchup or a three ball you want to throw my way, feel free. If I miss it in the chat, you can always tweet at me, and I'll try to get to all of those. Those are my two Masters round two, two balls, and three balls. All right. Danny Brasco, you've been sitting there patiently, quietly warming up, hitting the bag, waiting to dish out some UFC 300 picks. Now, if you didn't see Danny's UFC 300 picks from Wednesday's show, I encourage you to go back, listen to the podcast, watch the the lot, the YouTube show, which of course was live. But we've got a different set of picks here, Danny. What you got for us? Into the main card we go, UFC 300, Sia, and all, all in all from Wednesday and today, I believe I'll have seven picks on the board, so a lot of action on this card for you guys, and let's jump into one of the most debated fights of the night. It's Charles Oliveira taking on Armand Sarukian, and you know, guys, the champion has a name, and his name is Charles Dubronx Oliveira at plus 185. I'm forced to bet him. This, I feel like, is a 50-50 fight, and it's the number one lightweight contender fight. The winner of this one should get the next shot at the lightweight belt. Both guys have a loss in common to the champion, the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the UFC, Islam Makachev. And that's Oliveira's only loss in the last seven years. Uh, the guy has only gotten his striking better and better. He's got granite in his fists, and we know about his jiu-jitsu game. He's the all-time leader in submissions in UFC history. Armand Sarukian is a very talented, very well-rounded fighter. His best asset is his wrestling. Wrestling Charles Oliveira is a tough prospect because even on his back, he stays extremely dangerous. Wherever this fight goes, both guys will be dangerous. But I feel like it comes down to one big question. Who is going to make the big mistake? Both guys can fight a bit recklessly at times. And I feel that Charles Oliveira's style will force the fight out of Armand Sarukian at plus 185 odds see for a 50-50 fight. I feel like I got to take that number. So give me Charles Oliveira to kick off the main card bets for us. All right, next fight. I'm going to the co-main event of the evening, and that's Max Blessed Hollow. Excuse me, it's not the co-main event. It's actually the people's main event is what I wanted to say. The BMF belt is on the line for the baddest dude in the UFC. I'm going Max Blessed Holloway here. I'm taking him in two different ways, Sia. First of all, I like him on the money line. I got him at plus 190. He's all the way down to plus 135 on some books. So the line is a moving. But he's moving up to lightweight in this fight, and he's fought at lightweight before. He's taken on Justin Gaethje. In his previous lightweight contest, he took on Dustin Poirier. He lost that fight, but it was on just eight days' notice, and Holloway's fought at featherweight for most of his career. He just didn't have that physique, and I think he was overwhelmed a little bit by the boxing and the power of Dustin Poirier in that fight in 2019. He's had a full lightweight camp, and he looks absolutely jacked. See, so put on a ton of muscle. Lightweight Max Holloway, legit lightweight Holloway, Looks like a new man. And I think he might deliver a vintage performance. Uh, if you know the, I'm the best boxer quote, uh, I think he's going to put on one of those types of performances. Now, Gaethje's line, I think, initially was a little bit inflated because he's coming off a perfect head kick knockout win over Dustin Poirier himself. But after you get a perfect knockout like that, sometimes the betting odds just get a little bit too steep. And I think odds makers realize they made a mistake moving all the way down Holloway now to just a shorter underdog. So I'm expecting this one to be a five-round war. Holloway has cardio and a chin that is unmatched. And as good as Gaethje is, I feel like this is likely to go into deep waters. The longer it goes, the more I favor Holloway. Now, I'm also betting Holloway plus five and a half at minus 120. I got this plus 100, so also on the move. 
For those that are unfamiliar with spread betting in MMA, it is fairly new. It's a new way to kind of slice up your bet that I really like. And it's according to the judges' combined scorecards. So if Holloway wins the fight, you're going to win your plus five and a half. But if he loses a close 48-47 decision, you would cover that spread based on the judges' combined scorecards. So basically, you're betting Holloway wins or he loses in a split or, or a fight that's decided by one round. And with the odds makers setting the over-under at four and a half rounds, I'm expecting this one to be a great five-round war. Give me Holloway on the money line and Holloway plus five and a half. And see ya. We got to round it out with a pick in the main event of the Let's go. I'm going Jamal. Sweet dreams, hell. Everyone and their mother is likely going to bet Alex Poatan Pereira. He's maybe the best, most beautiful to watch kickboxer in the UFC. Devastating low kicks. Devastating left hook. We know him for his long series with Israel Adesanya in and out of the UFC. But this is at light heavyweight now. And he got cold slept by Izzy at middleweight. If you don't think Jamal Hill has the same capability of doing so, I think you're spinning yourself a tail. Jamal Hill is, I think, still underrated by a lot of uh, MMA fans. His boxing is awkward, but it's technical. The way he rolls punches and moves with the flow of the scrambling shots, I, I really like what he does. He ends up being in a better position, and his left cross down the pipe is scary, man. The thing fires like a piston. You have to kill Jamal Hill to put him away. He has the heart of a lion. And even a guy as devastating as Pereira, I just don't think he can do it. So I think Hill's going to put the pressure, mount it all fight. He's going to take Pereira to a dark place, and he's going to put him away maybe in the second or third round. Give me Jamal Hill on the money line plus 115. Here come the showdowns in the chat. I expected it. See ya. Well, let me ask you this, because there are some people in the chat that are um... – that are wondering about the Achilles injury for Hill. And you might have addressed it. Forgive me if you did. But how do you respond to that coming out? What was it, 8, 10 months ago he had that Achilles injury? I did not address it. And that's one of my favorite points. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Hill's doctor was the same man who repaired Kobe Bryant's Achilles, who came back super mamba after that, right? I mean, basketball is an extremely demanding sport on your Achilles, the side-to-side -side movement, right? He also repaired Tom Brady's knee. This is the most renowned doctor in the land. I mean, he went and sought the best care. Go watch Jamal Hill training camp videos. There is not one ounce less of explosivity coming off him. I, I don't think he lost a step at all. He looks confident. That's the big fear, right? Is, is are you going to trust your own body, right? I don't think Hill is losing a step in that confidence. Uh, Dr. Neil El Atrash, Atrache, I hope I'm saying it right, uh, repaired that Achilles, and I'm expecting him to come out 100% guns blazing. Buckets, how do you say that doctor's name? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> well, I, what I can say is this, Sid. I have a couple questions for you, Danny. Um, and we're going to start with, I'm going to be the one to represent the chat here. Because while I do agree with some of these plays, I do not agree with all of them. And specifically, I don't agree with your main event fight. Alex Pereira, I know that he did lose in that last fight to Israel Adesanya. I know that it's kind of a difficult thing for him. But he did bounce back immediately, absolutely blasting Jiri and by TKOs in the last UFC. And then he beat Jan Blakovich, Blakovich, I don't know how to say that name. Oh, but, oh, yeah, you got it. yeah, but he blasted those two guys. And honestly, I'm a big fan of Alex Pereira. I don't think he's quite done yet. And I'm a bit more worried about that Achilles injury than maybe you might be. So I'm not going to challenge you on Oliveira. I think if he's above, or above plus 150, you have to play that. But I will challenge you on this one. Give me Alex Pereira. If you're down for a showdown chat, I got your back. What do you say, Danny? Jake, play the music. <laughs> And I will say, I've actually got a question for Chip here as well. It's not a showdown question. Chip, I'm just completely hypothetical, curiosity getting the better or curiosity getting the better of me here. If Danny Brasco and I got a call from Dana White this afternoon saying, hey, we want you two to fight in the prelims, a bit of an exhibition match, you know, representing the early edge here, what would you set the lines on, Chip, for money line between me and Danny? Wow. Danny. Oh, uh, let's see. Danny <laughs> minus 145. <laughs> uh, I just he didn't even... He didn't need to, no, see, the he didn't, yeah, <laughs> he didn't no, need to like, see the line. I, I am super biased by like where you're from and like where you're living. And, and I just, I, th I think that while you, you get to see a lot more nature, I mean, I, I think Danny's got to scrap more. I think he had to scrap more to get here. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a, uh, I'm going to take that dog. I'm going to take that Chip, dog. That he's got. Chip, you nailed it. Every day in New York city is a fight. That's you get on the saying. train. It's a fight. You go to yeah. work. It's a fight. We scrapping out here, boy. I mean, I see the gym workouts. <laughs> hey, buckets. I see the gym workouts. I see the walks. But like, dog, 
Dan, Dan. And look, remember, like I, I just came. I spent the last couple weekends up in the Northeast. You, you got to have that edge, boy. <laughs> have that edge. I, will say this. I don't think me and Buckets are in the same weight class. He's definitely got the physique advantage on me. So I'm going to have to stick and move. So, we, you know, we might need to fight at a catch weight. Maybe I need to bulk up like Max Holloway. But what do you, what do you, what do you weigh, Danny? I'm like 160, bro, on a, on a, on a big day. Okay, so if I, I can drop 80 pounds before tomorrow. I think we got a fair fight between us. I'm down for so that. Now, now you got to back me because the weight cut's going to be tough. For Buckets. <laughs> that cut's going to be brutal today. If anybody would actually try that, it would probably be buckets. Um, I will. I will because of the size advantage. I'll go ahead and set the line. Uh, my line, I should say, at buckets minus 135. All right, uh, we got to get. Speaking of New York, another professional transition, Brasco. I don't know how you do it because we've got some sports line picks to bring, and they may involve a New York team. Uh, I'm in a New York state of mind, but only after this message from our partners. We need your sports news anywhere. We've got breaking news to bring you. Then get your sports anytime you want them. Big trade news overnight to discuss. Because we know you need sports all the time. A lot of movement in the rankings this week. A legend adds to their legacy. We're bringing you that breaking news right here on HQ. CBS Sports HQ, anywhere, anytime, all the time. Bitsy, by the way, welcome back to the Early Edge. Uh, sponsored, of course, brought to you by BetMGM. Uh, Bitsy says, Danny minus 1,000 Supermax bet. David Talk says, don't mess with Brasco. All right, well, let's get some sports line picks out of the way. I know you guys have some golf questions in here, too, which I'll address, at least the ones that I saw. Um, Yankees money line, minus 114. We've got Clark Schmidt on the mound against Carlos Carrasco. A lot of juice here, like the Yankees on the road playing the Guardians. Um, I, I don't know how much the Guardians are going to be able to hit around here. I like the Yankees in this one as well. Uh, Josh Giddy is our other one. We're going to the NBA. By the way, that one starts at 7-10, the Yankees game. Uh, Josh Giddy, OKC, under 26.5 points, rebounds, and assists. I noticed OKC is a huge favorite in that game. Maybe Josh Giddy doesn't get the full complement of minutes. Either way, under 26.5 points, rebounds, and assists. That Bucks thunder game is at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Chip, we got to get to your picks, but real quick, let me address some golf questions. Uh, some some people asked about Bryson in a three ball over Thorbjorn Olsson and Gary Woodland. I do like that. I do want you to watch out for Olsson, though. He's not he's not a bad golfer. We just don't know a lot about him because he's been on the DP World Tour more than he's been on the PGA Tour. So I like it. It's it's certainly a lean for me. It's something I saw, not an official play, but but I do like the look. Uh, Finau over Straka and Mickelson. That's interesting. We might have somebody on this show to talk about that. Um, so I'll, I'll reserve that one. But B Mills, you did mention that Cantley hold out, and that's part of the reason uh, on, on the final hole. That's part of the reason he was under par. Well, the thing about Cantley is he led the field yesterday on approach. That might surprise some people. And Chip, there's something that won't surprise you at all. Second in the field, second in the field yesterday, round one of the Masters on approach. Hmm. Chip, you want to guess who that was? Yeah, that would be Tone. That would be the big Tone, Tony Finau, uh, gaining 3.54 strokes against the field. And that's why, like, when is it, I send the pick into Snake, right? And then you start opening up all the show docs. And when I see that C and I have targeted the same golfer, man, that's a good feeling. So I am going to go with that three ball that a lot of you mentioned in the chat. Taking Tony Finau, uh, minus the short number, number against Sepp Straka and Phil Mickelson. Uh, he sort of fits the profile for a lot of what I'm looking to for just the round two, three balls. Let's find somebody who is dialed in and then either A, caught some bad breaks, or B, was just a little bit off with the putter. And it, really specifically with Finau, it was only on the first nine. I mean, it was only on three holes, lost more than two strokes across three holes, you know, holes that should have been par holes, made a mess of it with the putter, lost a couple strokes there. So I see just even more improvement from what was a one under round of 71. He's going up against Straka and Mickelson, both in the bottom half of the field in terms of the ball striking coming into this. And, and like Sia mentioned at the top of the show, Tony Finau is someone who, at the Masters, you automatically are going to apply a little bit of course value. And so when you've got that, uh, in addition to how he looked with the iron play hitting into some of these greens, you've got to feel excited about this opportunity. So I am also, uh, like my main man Sia, on Finau, and I am on that three ball that the chat was discussing a lot earlier, uh, Sepp Straka and Phil Mickelson. Absolutely love it. I mean, that really was... That was one I was considering between, obviously, Finau over Justin Thomas as well. I, I think 
I'm really not sure why I didn't go your way. Usually I like to go, I like to isolate just one player as opposed to two. And you know what's funny, Chip? It's like Phil Mickelson, like he probably can't compete with me now, but sometimes he just does like random stuff and shows up at the top of leaderboards. I don't think that's going to happen today. I absolutely love your three ball. And by the way, David Tock does too. He says, another great show. Chip the Great is back. And by the way, Buckets, some people who haven't been seeing the live shows in the last few days, maybe they're here and they haven't been here in a couple of weeks, they say they love the hair. I, I got to say, I kind of love the hair as well. Yeah, so I call this the, I forgot I had a show at 10 today, so I got out of the shower and immediately just pressed down as hard as I could. But honestly, I'll, I'll see how it goes with, uh, with other people. We'll, we'll, we'll test it out. Yeah, I'm getting also, I've made this reference before, Dennis the Menace vibes a little bit too. That's kind of an old school reference. I'm talking like comic book Dennis the Menace. Well, We're going... Hey AC, did you see Sprockets earlier? I was thinking there's no way that Buckets Sprockets. has Sprockets, but that is big Sprockets vibes right there. Oh my gosh, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. That, my, my favorite was, will the real John Buckets please stand up? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. Uh, Slick Vic uh, referencing Eminem as well. Absolutely. I, I love all, all, by the way, hopefully everybody's hit the like button. I really appreciate everybody being here. We'll do the recap screen in a second, but I do have to remind you, we're going to be here Saturday and Sunday, and it's going to be a master's intensive show, but we're going to be talking a lot of MLB, a lot of NBA, like all the weekend stuff. Include, I don't know, maybe we'll dip back into to, uh, other stuff as well, but we're going to have some really good uh, Saturday and Sunday shows that won't just be master. So I expect everybody, if you can, to be in this chat, hitting the like button and participating, just like all of you are. TX Joel, Slick Vic, Kylie Reynolds, James Murphy, James Valdez, Snug the Cat, Nick Castrucci, Eric David. I see you all in here. Big Cheesy, of course. I uh, really appreciate all of the involvement here. Let's take a look at the recap screen before we get out of here, folks. Bucket Sporting, team total over two and a half. And oh, no. Kaiser Slouten? Did I do that right? Dave Matthews Band? I... Your guess is as good as mine, CC. <laughs> Fair enough. Of course, DNB's draw no bet, but uh, Dave Matthews Band. Go listen to some Dave Matthews Band to start up your Friday after the early edge. Trust me, a mood enhancer. All right, I've got two golf plays today. They start in a little bit. Tony Finau, minus 115 over Justin Thomas and Patrick Cantley. Plus 125 over Min Woo Lee and Ricky Fowler. Chip Patterson, also on Tony Finau in a different way. Minus 105 over Sepp Straka and Phil Mickelson. Danny Brasco, UFC 300. He's already given out a few picks. He, he writes articles on Sportsline, which you can see if you go to sportsline.com backslash join. Charles Oliveira, Moneyline plus 185. Max Holloway, Holloway, excuse me, Moneyline plus 140. Max Holloway, plus five and a half, minus 120, and Jamal Hill, money line plus 115. Believe there's a showdown involved in that one. And speaking of showdown, speaking of New York City, the Yankees, money line in Cleveland, but minus 140, and Josh Giddy from OKC under 26 and a half points, rebounds, and assists, minus 115. That's a game at 8 o'clock tonight against the Bucks. Wow. That's a lot of picks, folks. Uh, we went 500 yesterday, lost a little bit of juice, of course. We're going to try to do a lot better. I'll see you tomorrow on the Saturday show for more Masters Round matchups for some MLB. You're going to see some familiar faces here tomorrow. And we're going to, of course, touch on some sports line picks, NBA, things of that nature as well. Uh, it's been a great Friday. Let's make it even better the rest of the way. Say hi to a stranger. Strike up a conversation with somebody on the opposite side of the political aisle as you. Just stay positive. Look at the good in everything. Hopefully we catch some tickets today. On behalf of Jake the Snake on the ones and twos, Buckets, a.k.a. Slim Shady, Dennis the Menace, whatever you want to call him. He looks great. Danny Brasco with the one-two with the hooks. And, of course, Chip Patterson with the chip me up. I am C. Najat, otherwise known as the Counselor of Cash. This is The Early Edge. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. We rest our case.